Hi, welcome to this new episode of IT Conversations. I'm Jeffrey Kusters, field CTO at ITQ, and today we're having a technologist panel discussion around multi-cloud and Tensu. I'm here with uh, Robert and Eric. Uh, guys, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Robert. I'm a technologist with ITQ, and I focus on the uh, Tensu portfolio. Hi, and I'm Eric van Brugge. I'm a technologist in multi-cloud at ITQ. Cool. So guys, today we're going to talk about uh, multi-cloud and of course the app modernization uh, initiatives that we see at a lot of our customers, right? Um, so when customers are actually moving to the cloud for, you know, for various reasons, uh, one typical use case that we often see is app modernization. Uh, Robert, to start with you, um, why are customers looking at cloud to, to do, you know, app modernization? What, what are the benefits? What are reasons to make that move? Well, so um, you can, to start with, you can do app modernization anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the cloud, but that association is made by a lot of people because the public cloud providers like Amazon, Amazon Azure, they've made it very easy to develop applications in public cloud. Um, but uh, it's certainly possible to develop modern application, container-based applications on-premises as well. So the reality is you, you have a choice. Um, you can you know, run these applications, you can develop these applications anywhere now, you can deploy them anywhere. So the choice is really up to you um, to, to see which of those environments best fits your business needs. Um, there are no techno technological limitations really anymore. Okay, and um, Eric, from your perspective, um, I see a lot of customers also, you know, as part of their cloud journey, also modernizing their data center. And like Robert mentioned, you know, uh, pulling, you know, the, the cloud native services that you need basically into your data centers, uh, the capabilities at least. So what, what's your take? Well, customers can deny that they need to do something with the several public cloud platforms. And um, what VMware is trying to achieve is, is uh, building this multi-cloud um, well, platform idea to be able to, to deliver a consistent operating model for all the, all the clouds uh, a customer can use. Okay, Eric, so you mentioned the consistent uh, uh, operating model mm -hmm. that you need across, you know, your data center and across your cl cloud environments. Why is that so important? Well, if you look at all the, the different cloud solutions, uh, each uh, public cloud provider uses its own technology. So your people need, your, all your people need to be skilled in all the various technologies. So, and if you can provide a single operating model um, across all those, all those cloud environments using VMware Cloud Foundation, which consists of vSphere, and NSXT, um, your IT uh, infra team can basically use the same one uh, skill set to manage all those public clouds. Yeah. So, Robert, I assume that the you know consistent operating model is also relevant and important to the Kubernetes layer on top, right? That's true. Uh, so, modern application development is, is often done with Kubernetes, and modern application architectures are run inside Kubernetes. Um, the public cloud uh, providers, um, they all have their own um, Kubernetes uh, offering, service offering. Uh, VMware uh, also has its own Kubernetes distribution now. So um, customers are faced with which direction do they choose? Do they, do they um, uh, choose a, a specific public cloud distribution of Kubernetes? Um, or um, are, they, you know, do they, are they forced to, to, to silo it out? Um, the Tanzu portfolio uh, with VMware kind of offers you both directions. So people can make their own choice what they'd like to do. Um, VMware have a version of their Kubernetes distribution, which is called Tanzu Kubernetes Grid, which runs, which can run um, natively in uh, any public cloud. Um, so that again gives you um, a, a consistent operating model, in, in this case around a Kubernetes distribution and all of the components that go around that. Um, and you can make it consistent on premises and in public cloud at the same time. If, however, you would rather make use of um, the Kubernetes offerings that are uh, offered by the public cloud providers themselves, I think of things like EKS, um, then you can certainly do that. And you know, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, enterprises are already operating in that hybrid cloud model. Um, and, but you might want governance over all those different kinds of Kubernetes environments. Um, in that case, you can just pick some different products from the Tanzu portfolio that, that will help you with that kind of government. So you still have the flexibility to choose which operating model works best for you, um, but uh, you can still add government, governance and control 
and um, uh, you know various other technologies stacks on top of that um, to, to to streamline um, how these different uh, cloud environments will work together. Yeah, and, and I think reality is that there's no single person within you know a medium to large organization typically who is going to make that decision, right? I think reality is that the one business line is already working with Azure. The second business line is working with AWS. We have maybe the central IT department doing stuff with VMware Cloud uh, with Tensu on top. So I think reality will be that there will be you know a wide range of Kubernetes offerings available you know throughout the uh, your IT environment. So with Tensu Mission Control, you can you know tie that all together and make sure that that the operational um, burden of you know keeping everything in place and secure is you know drastically lowered, right? Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm not just thinking of Tanzu Mission Control, but also things like um, Tanzu Observability, uh, things like Tanzu Service Mesh. I mean, these are all um, layers you can choose that enable certain types of um, uh, uh, you know, functionality layers that you can layer on top of basically any Kubernetes distribution, whether it's 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 VMware's distribution or public cloud vendors. Um, I'm also thinking of Tanzu Application Platform, for example, which uh, gives a higher level abstraction that developers can use to very easily push code without having to worry about the differences between these different cloud providers. Um, and that's a great example of, of having a consistent operating model on the developer side while still having a different, maybe diverse uh, Kubernetes distributions underneath. Mm. And um, Eric, maybe circling back uh, to the infrastructure layer once once again, um, what are typical reasons uh, reasons why customers are not able to to, to fully move to the uh, to public cloud, for example? Um, I think reality is that you know there will be a hybrid model for most companies. Yeah. Can you name some of the typical reasons? Well, a typical reason for a customer to not go to a public cloud will be, uh, for for example, some compliance regulations like uh, data sovereignty. Uh, the data needs to be in their own data center. Or maybe they have applications that are latency sensitive. Um, so m most typically, that those are the reasons to not go to a public cloud. So it's compliance regulations and, and performance, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so how does VMware Cloud tie into this? How can can that solve uh, you know part of this problem? Well, it's a it's not a if a question basically. It's not like in that the customer needs to decide if they're going to run everything on premises or everything in, in the public couch. Mm -hmm. You can use both of them. And the multi-cloud solution from VMware uh, achieves this for each customer because you can migrate uh, your workloads between your on-premises environment and the multi-cloud back and forward. So if you have applications that don't have these uh, compliance regulations, you can put them in, in the public cloud basically. And if they do have those applications, you can move them back onto your on-premises environment. Yeah, okay. And there's also this this whole movement of, you know, for customers that are looking to reap the benefits of, you know, the public cloud model and the cloud provider, you know, doing much of the heavy lifting. Um, but in their own data centers, you know, within the trusted four walls of the data center. I think VMware calls it local cloud. Can you, can you name some examples? Yeah, the, the solution you're looking at are, are VMC on Dell EMC, for example, or the VMC on AWS Outpost. And basically, what it is, that's, an, that's like an extension of your of the public cloud offering in your own uh, on-premises data center. So it's fully managed by VMware or AWS uh, or Dell EMC, depending on which version you choose. Uh, and it li delivers the same operating model that you have on the on the public cloud in your own uh, in your own, own data center. Mm. And I, you know, I also see a lot of the public cloud providers uh, also taking this motion, uh, bringing you know their native services, you know, to on-prem. Uh, to on-prem data centers, so it's 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 you know kind of an establishment of the hybrid model, yeah. the way that I look at it. Yeah. Um, so maybe uh, you know shifting over to you know what IDQ can deliver in this context. How can we help customers? Maybe to start with you, Robert. Maybe a bit of a broad question, but how are we well positioned to help customers on their app modernization journey and their cloud journey? Well, we bring a lot of um, expertise around the the VMware uh, portfolio um, to the table. Um, as VMware increases their own multi-cloud strategy, um, many more of the products that VMware is working on, you see this very clearly in the Tanzu portfolio, have a multi-cloud, um, kind of run it anywhere type of uh, philosophy behind them. Um, these products still need to be integrated. Um, you need to get them up and running. Um, uh, the the, the SaaS-based offerings are usually 
a bit, bit simpler to implement, but there's plenty of stuff that, that needs integration in data center. If you want to get your, your workloads and the automation around your workloads running in this, this kind of this single operating model type of uh, situation, um, that's something with that, that we're ideally suited to help with uh, based on our, our experience around those products. All right, thanks, Robert. Uh, Eric, anything for me to add on this? What, what, what we can add to Cosmos is that we have several partnerships with all the, the major public cloud providers. So we, are, uh, we have Google certified people, AWS certified people. Um, are we investing heavily in, in the partnerships with these uh, public cloud providers uh, to be able to help our customers to get into this multi-cloud journey? All right. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. I think we're well out of time. Um, so thanks for participating in this uh, discussion and hopefully uh, talk to you next time. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this episode of IT Conversations. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hopefully see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>